Hey everyone, in this video we'll be discussing this problem of 3D rotation from David Morin. So let's discuss the problem. So in this problem we have an axle that is massless and we have a uniform disc and one end of this axis is pivoted. So the wheel now, it's, it's said that the wheel rotates without slipping, which means the disc is performing pure rolling. And it's given that the point of contact on the ground, it traces out a circle with frequency omega, so with frequency capital O. So basically, if you look at it from the top, let's say this is this point, okay, this bottommost point, I'm representing it with this dot. This point traces out a circle and the rate at which this angle changes, d theta by dt, is given to be capital O. So we have to first of all show that the omega, small omega, that is basically going to be the net angular velocity of the system, which we will determine. We have to uh, prove that small omega is going to be capital omega by tan theta. So that would be question number one. And the question number two is we have to determine this normal reaction between the wheel and the ground. That's the more challenging part in this problem. So beginning with the solution. Oh yeah, and before getting into that problem, just to clear out some concepts, I'm going to take this other case. So in this case, basically we have a rod that is pivoted at one end and it is being rotated with an angular velocity omega. <coughs> so how do you find omega? You just have to uh, curl your fingers, curl your right hand fingers in the direction of rotation of this rod and you'll get the value of, get the direction of omega. So, if, so I want to introduce you guys to a new topic called as principal moments. It's a fancy name, but like it's, it's pretty simple. This is how it's explained in David Morin. So I just want to explain to you guys in exactly similar manner. So for that, basically you define one end of an axis that is along this stick, okay? and two orthogonal axes, okay? So in this case, in this particular case, I have defined y axis to be along the stick, x axis in this direction, and z axis out of the plane. So taking that nomenclature into account, the value of ix is going to be ml square by three, right? Or that's a moment of inertia about this axis. That's going to be ml square by three. And iy is going to be zero because y-axis is absolutely along the stick so the moment of inertia is zero and iz is ml square by three right exactly like ix the benefit of basically writing ix iy and iz is that we can write the angular momentum about this point o to be ix omega x iy omega y and iz omega z this is basically the x component y component and z component of angular momentum Okay, so if you just substitute it, what is the value of omega x? Omega x is basically the component of omega along the x-axis. That's going to be omega sine theta, right? I y is zero, so this component becomes zero. I Omega z is zero, so this component becomes zero. So L vector comes out to be along the x direction, which means in this direction, okay? Now, you, now pay attention that the x, the, the omega vector and the L vector is not coinciding. So that's the thing that I wanted to explain to you guys. It is not necessary that the L vector and the omega vector coincide. And it's because of the fact that the mass distribution is not even about this axis. Okay, anyways, so as we have angular momentum vector now, uh, I want to discuss another topic. So if we have a vector A that is rotating with an angular velocity of omega, then we can, and whose magnitude doesn't change, First of all, we can, uh, we can write dA by dt to be omega cross A. If you see carefully, dA by dt is perpendicular to A, right? Because, because the magnitude of A is not changing, which, all right. So in this case, A vector and omega vector is perpendicular. So we can say that dA by dt, the magnitude of it is simply omega multiplied by A. And this is a concept that I want to tell you guys. We'll utilize this to find the magnitude of dl by dt in this case. So in this case, if you split the L vector as L cos theta and L sine theta, and if you observe the rod rotating around, 
you can see this l cos theta basically rotates around in the same uh, circle i mean not in the same circle in the same fashion that the center of mass rotates or basically any other point rotates in this circle so the rate at which this l cos theta is rotating about this axis is the same as omega that's my point so if you look at it from that and also one more thing the l sin theta as you can see it does not change so so as we have to find dl by dt the l sin theta won't have any contribution to it only the l cos theta will and also the magnitude of l is not changing right because we just determined the l to be this huh? so the magnitude of l is not changing only the direction is so if you look at it from the top this l cos theta is rotating with an angular velocity of omega now as i said earlier uh, the rate of change of a rotating vector the magnitude of that you can determine to be that vector multiplied by the omega so if you compute it you'll get the answer to be answer of magnitude of dl by dt to be this okay and how do we determine the direction so as i said earlier the rate of change of a rotating vector is omega cross a but at the same time the direction is perpendicular to a so if you see carefully in this case as uh, the omega is up omega is in this direction this l cos theta if i draw the top view will go like this right which means the torque i mean or we could say the dl by dt has to be into the plane because the l cos theta l cos theta is going to move inside right so therefore the dl by dt must be inside and perpendicular to l cos theta okay so continuing with that we can determine the direction to be into the plane or we can also write it this way right dl by dt we can also find it by doing omega cross l if you do that you'll get exactly the same answer and now it's just confirmed that it's in the it's into the plane right now now let's just determine the torque what will be the torque it's going to be mg torque about this point oh by the way mg multiplied by l by 2 sin theta and that's also into the plane which means that just confirms uh, our results and now if you can if you just can equate these two you'll get the value of omega in this case so i just wanted to introduce you guys to this process of you know finding dl by dt and comparing it to the torque which will which we will be using in the next question okay so now coming to our question we are going to discuss some concepts here so first concept is that there are two simultaneous motions that we have to pay attention to one is the spin motion of this disk about its own axis which is this axis so if you curl your fingers in this direction you'll get the direction of that omega to be in this direction which i specified as omega s now it's all it was also given in the problem now the second type of angular velocity is the angular velocity which which the center of mass rotates about this axis it's also called the precession angular velocity as it is as it was given in the problem or you can also call it the orbital angular velocity so it's basically like if you forget about this spin and just consider the rotational uh, just consider the turning effect of this uh, disk that angular velocity is o okay so the superposition of these two individual omegas will give you the net angular velocity of the system so if somebody ask you what is ask you what is the angular velocity of this disk plus axle system you have to say it's omega small omega all right so now we can see oh yeah and one more concept this net omega net angular velocity of the system will always be along the points that are instantaneously at rest so at this particular instant this point is at rest and also this point is at rest right because the disk is pure rolling and this point is at rest because it is a pivot so the net angular velocity at this instant will be along this direction okay and it is only at this instant because after a while the disk is going to rotate and come here at this instant the net omega will be in this direction but at this instant right this specific instant the omega is in this direction <laughs> 
now these three vectors form a beautiful vector triangle so you can just say omega s sine theta to be ohm and omega s cos theta to be small omega if you divide these two we get our a option basically which we had to prove omega to be ohm upon tan theta so that is proved now coming to the second part for that we'll borrow the idea that we used in the previous question we are going to define our x-axis to be along this stick or along this spin axis and our y-axis to be orthogonal to it obviously and our z-axis will be out of the plane in this case so ix right what is what will be ix in this case it will be mr square by 2 simply right and iy which will be the moment of inertia of this system about this axis so for that we'll be using parallel axis theorem and we know the moment of inertia about this axis or basically the diameter of the disk is one fourth of mr square and we need to add ml square into it okay and l uh, using trigonometry you can write it as r upon tan theta so that's why i wrote mr square by 4 plus ml square so again like in the previous question i told you guys the angular momentum vector is ix omega x i y omega y and zero in this case so this is lx and this is ly if you compute it you'll get ix to be this this so this lx component is simply the simply assume a disk being rotated at an angular velocity of omega that is basically what ls is it's the spin angular momentum of this right and this is ly so this would be there will be two components of the angular momentum one is lx in this direction and another is ly which is in this direction so let's say the net angular momentum is something like in this direction okay so I'm going to write the net angular momentum to be in this direction. This will have two components. One is L parallel in this direction. Another is L perpendicular, which is in this direction. If you observe carefully, I mean, if you imagine the disk spinning around the axis, you can clearly see the L parallel will change and the L perpendicular will not change. The L parallel, if you observe, it is it is rotating around this axis in a circle with with an angular velocity of ohm right it is exactly the same exactly the same as the angular velocity with which the center is rotating so basically if i could find l parallel i could basically determine the magnitude of dl by dt by simply computing l parallel multiplied by ohm so that's the idea basically we want to find dl by dt ka magnitude so what will L parallel be? That's pretty easy to determine, right? We know LX is, we know LX and we know LY. So the component of LX in this direction is LX cos theta and the component of LY in this direction is LY sine theta. So the summation of these two will give us L parallel. Okay, so I mean, if, if you couldn't visualize it, so initially this was the direction of L parallel. I'm writing, I'm drawing the top view by the way. And after a while, the L parallel is going to be like this. So only, th so this L parallel is rotating and the, and D L parallel, right? The change in L parallel vector is first of all, perpendicular to L parallel. So which, and it's out of the plane, right? So L parallel was initially like this after DT time, it's going to be something like this. And the Delta L parallel vector will be out of the plane. Okay, I hope you guys understand that. And so L parallel, uh, I just mentioned, you can compute it like this. So after calculation, you'll get L parallel to be this. Now, the torque is simply DL by DT. I mean, the magnitude of, uh, magnitude of DL by DT and magnitude of DL by DT, we can write it as L parallel multiplied by omega and L parallel we just computed if you multiply it with omega, you'll get the magnitude of torque to be this much. Okay, and the direction also we determine this L parallel uh, after a while, if you draw the top view, L parallel is coming outside, right? So the DL parallel vector is out of the plane, out of the page, basically. 
Okay, so that, that's the direction of the torque as well. It's coming out of the plane. Now the torque you can also determine in now. Now let's compute the torque about the point O. It's going to be mg multiplied by L cos theta minus the normal reaction multiplied by this distance is L upon cos theta, if you see carefully. So the subtraction of both of them will be the torque. And as we as we took the torque, let's take the torque out of the plane to be positive because that's what we determined dl by dt to be. We'll take the torque of normal to be positive. So now we just have to equate both of these torques and we'll get the value of normal reaction. So I hope that cleared out some doubts. If you guys have any more doubts, you can comment down below and I'll try to help. So yeah, that was this problem. So thanks for watching guys.